To say I was nervous about starting a PhD would be like a massive understatement, especially as someone who, you know, and we all suffer from imposter syndrome, but definitely going to UC Berkeley, knowing that I got in because the advisor had kind of seen a letter he liked in my letters of rec, but I wasn't invited to like the visits and I wasn't really part of the selection from like the entire professor committee. So I kind of felt like, I wonder if I really should be here. If you're about to start at UC Berkeley, do not feel like you don't belong there. You absolutely do. There is a specific reason you are there. While I was there, people from all sorts of backgrounds came in and flourished in the program. You'll do great in your courses. You're going to do fine in your research and eventually your thesis will get completed and you'll get that lollipop that says finished on it with a PH. The only way I can think of surviving the UC Berkeley PhD in engineering is to say, just keep going. Those dark times of the PhD, you're reading some really, really deep literature. Your mind is thinking about all sorts of things in the world and problems, and you probably will deal with mental health challenges. Get the help you need earlier before you really think you need it rather than later. And just keep pushing. It will get done eventually. You will get the paper that filled out. You will get your signature and you will get out of there. And it will be worth it because you will have way more skills than you actually think that you do. Choosing an advisor for a four or five year PhD in engineering, um, it's probably a science that, you know, is hard to really get right. Understand what their working style and relationship is. Because at the end of the day, I think I didn't value enough or understand enough that this person will be your work relationship almost manager or boss. Try to get an understanding from the advisor, but especially the PhD students that are already in that lab. Reach out to them and say, hey, what's the style like? Are people usually working alone? Is there collaboration? How often do you meet with the advisor? On one trip, I was in a lab and, and the PhD advisor for that lab seemed kind of, you know, really rude. And as I was walking out, I was talking to a PhD student. I was like, hey, so what's it like to be here? And he told me, hey, look, here's my number. Just talk to me later. I can't tell you much right now, but don't come here. A lot of different factors will affect your mental health as a graduate student. I think the perceived use of your time that you always need to be working, whether it's weekdays or weekends, is something that hinders you in so many possible ways. For instance, you may not go to the gym as often as you'd like. You may not eat the right foods because you don't value the time to put in to make healthier foods versus eating whatever's available to you. I'll probably never eat Subway again in my life because that's all I ate at UC Berkeley and I'm over it. Um, you may um, not value like relaxation, reading for pleasure because you're just reading random papers all the time. It's something to put the most effort in is to keep some sanity during the PhD and it's really important to balance those two. I was very bad at it. So trust me, it's very important to do as I learn to do it now. I had a very regular gym routine. That's something I've tried to keep since high school football. Yes, believe it or not, I was on a high school football team. I was on the team. I didn't really play much, but I was on the team. In the middle of the day, go to the gym, especially when it's empty. The nice thing as a PhD student is you kind of can work on your own hours in many cases. Live with people that you know really well, that you're really good friends with. That really helps you after a long day, after a lost day of work that you're like, I got nothing done today. I just read random papers down a random, you know, paper rabbit hole and got nowhere. It's great to come home, hang out with people that make you feel good, that maybe are going through the same struggles you are. Initially, I felt like the best thing to do was to be as close as possible I could be to campus. I didn't bring my car and I was just going to walk. When I eventually ventured off in my last couple of years of my PhD, I lived in a, in a place called Walnut Creek, 25 minutes from UC Berkeley. And this turned out to be one of the best decisions of my PhD. Separating myself physically from the Berkeley campus to where I live was a huge boon for me because it really just caused a physical separation and I was no longer near work, I was now at home. Being a PhD student means you're working, doing, solving really hard problems, trying to, um, but you're getting paid a very small salary. So after you pay rent, you have some money set aside for food, um, especially your first few years in the PhD before you start getting you know, salary bumps, if you will, um, your, the rest of your finances will be scarce. Do your best 
to still have a portion of your salary that you use to treat yourself. You'll be very surprised that even a small amount, and I'm talking tens, $50 amounts, because that's really maybe all you can do. I ended up hanging out with a lot of grad students and we can joke about getting free food here and there and we can joke about, um, hey, like, let's go at like the, the time where there's a discount, what's the sandwich of the day at Subway? Again, it's, it's a traumatizing experience. Some final notes I want you to take away from this. Mental health really, really, really matters and it really will be challenge for you. It's something to not be afraid of because again, if you look at the statistics, almost every PhD student is dealing with some form of mental health, whether it's anxiety, depression, and they usually come together. So I would say instead of trying to be the person that avoids the anxiety and the depression of the PhD, try to lean into it a little more and accept like, hey, that's gonna be a challenge, it's gonna come along with it. What can I do to understand how to deal with it? And I've seen even the most positive, you know, most bubbly people having those late nights three years into their PhD of, man, what am I doing with my life? Bro, what are we doing? Why are we here? Why don't we just go to industry? Why don't we just do this? Why don't we just do that? It's part of the process and you'll be able to laugh about it um, and be triggered by it a little later in your life. Let me know, I'd love to know what you have to ask. Good luck on your endeavors and again, just keep going. Just trust the process, just keep going, you're going to do just fine.